YouTube. It's uh, Art Rant. I just came across a really uh, an interesting video I did last summer called Stop Meddling uh, or the, uh, uh, I, I think I, uh, I'm still trying to figure out the second part of it, which is uh, the Kooning analysis I did. And I'd like to call it the Stop Meddling and the de Kooning Put. And a put is a, is a, is a, is an, a financial term, I think, that refers to making a gamble or a bet on a stock going, I think it's going, uh, being a certain price at some point. So uh, it was an interesting uh, video I just came across, so I'm going to post it. And uh, 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 so, uh, yeah, check it out. Thanks. Art Rant, uh, August the 19th and uh, insights and studio reveries on various topic, topics and subjects uh, mainly to do with art. Um, and uh, this is a little bit of a follow-up on the last uh, video I made. Uh, I'm glad it's not happening to me and I was uh, just a quick sideline I was listening to uh, a debate between Christopher Hitchens and a fellow called Frank Turek, a Christian and a an, uh, believer in God and an atheist, having it out, duking it out. Uh, I think Hitchens won hands down. Uh, these uh, these God people tend to uh, have this have this kind of anxiety uh, about being able to prove their 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 conviction. And it, it's actually very, very simple to me. It's not very complicated to prove the existence of, uh, of this, this God thing as the religions try to do. And it's simply that when you recognize that the, the God, sense, feeling, knowledge, faith, whatever people say they have, is not external. It's an internal. And as such is proof in itself. I'm sitting here. My cat's here. Everything exists is proof of this internal quality. Every molecule, every electron is a dimension of Godness. And to try and figure out, you know, all these like dancing, they're dancing on these pins trying to figure out how to prove or disprove and all that. It's an, it's an internal, it's an awareness. It's knowing it's not a matter of proving to anyone or going and meddling out there and trying to convince anyone it's a very inherent simple straightforward feeling and the consequences that come out of that are are absolutely incredible i i, I feel so uh satisfied with that sense of uh that this god thing is in each one of us everything that exists animate inanimate it elevates itself through the different layers of consciousness, whatever that uh, uh, object, subject may be, whether it's, as I say, animal or, or in, inanimate, it's there. And um, she keeps trying to cover up my notes, yeah, hanging on for dear life. And I, I thought that uh, the, really the greatest truth for me is the idea that uh, you love or leave me alone. It's you either loving or if you're not, leave me alone. And I think this is really the essence of things. If you're a believer or whatever, just act your belief by loving rather than trying to meddle and convince anyone. So just leave it alone. Just, you know, live live your life and live the best way you can without getting meddling other than being loving. And that's the best kind of meddling. So, uh, any other thoughts I had on that little thing? That, that was it. They went on for hours, I think. I didn't catch all of it. Um, and I said, what is the ultimate purpose uh, or preoccupation behind having a belief or a conviction about something that may or may not be, if it isn't to meddle? So, that's sort of the conclusion I came to after listening to them. Anyway, as, aside from that, it fits in it fits into my last uh, posting as well that uh, I'm glad it's not happening to me and uh, Hitchens little comment about delighting in the misfortune of others uh, kind of fit into that and uh, tongue-in-cheek there's a little sort of playfulness on his part but it all makes sense and which comes 
back now for me. Uh, I'm reading a biography of de Kooning. Uh, an interesting book uh, recently came out, very well written. Uh, it's a little bit long. I don't like going like 700 pages or whatever. Uh, it's sort of tedious after a while, but they're keeping my interest. And here is the one I'm halfway through, and I have picked the essence so far, and I relate it to myself the way I'm working right now. It, it started to make sense. Uh, something about de Kooning, what he was doing, and uh, obviously his life was very difficult and I, I don't think people should focus on that too much. The biographers tend to uh, reveal the, uh, the dirty little secrets of his uh, uh, problematic uh, life and obviously poor to begin with and his relationships were just terrible, which also explains, I think, the feeling of misogyny in his uh, female studies and his female paintings of women. Um, but. Uh, that's, that's a whole other side and I, I think that's probably another video because I don't really think that you have to be a, a, a sort of fringe personality in order to be able to make art. I think art can be done in a very uh, contemplative, serene, almost meditative sense uh, and you don't need to be a, a, a sort of a, a person that pulls out their hair in order to accomplish whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. Uh, bohemians, all that kind of thing. But anyway, in the book, uh, they, they discuss the idea, and this was very interesting for me, of surface and line. That de Kooning uh, began to realize two very vital uh, aspects in his work. Uh, and I also realized this uh, in terms of where I'm moving, how I'm, how I'm uh, I think, progressing. Uh, definitely progressing. I like what I'm doing right now. And that is to be aware of surface and line. And I think the two are kind of metaphors. As in anything, the world is kind of a reflection. It's not so much, uh, it's kind of the shadows on the cave walls that we are experiencing things, we're creating our realities, uh, we are seeing what we want to see, and uh, it, to that extent, uh, the idea of surface and Line and de Kooning are crucial in understanding his breakthrough from uh, a work that was kind of surrealistic, tied somewhat to uh, previous artists in the way it looked. The work looked very much like uh, uh, some of the people, particularly Picasso. I think he was very enthralled with Picasso. Um, and he realized that his main preoccupation was surface. Not so much what he was making, but uh, the, the feeling in the surface. When you look at it, there is a central confrontation with the painting that he had, and he began to develop and evolve uh, through a period of experimentation where he put newspapers on top of his paintings in order to preserve the wetness of the oil so he could continue uh, he, was, he was notorious for scraping down and reworking and getting rid of paintings. He, didn't, he destroyed a lot of the paintings. I personally don't believe in that. I, I like keeping it around. Um, uh, even if, I'm, if I don't think it was successful, it's, I, I think it's important to have as a, um, as a remnant of, of a process. Uh, but anyway, I'm sidetracking there. The surface idea was pivotal and then of course the surface availed itself to the line. And I think the surface is a very contemporary now feeling for him. And the line actually I think was quite old. It was almost something where I would say it went back to pre-Renaissance levels of awareness, even further back, maybe even cave art. The idea that line uh, sculpted on a two-dimensional plane a feeling of thereness. Something was there because of line. But there is no line without surface. And I think the two come together uh, in his breakthrough. His breakthrough was the idea of creating a surface which was absolutely now and sensual. Meaning you're feeling it as you're looking at it. You can't resist the, uh, uh, no matter what your convictions about subjects are, the surface in itself carries the painting. And into that surface, he, he, he introduces a very ancient feeling that is an art, which is the sense of line. And line designates lots of different things. Line can be 
Uh, in fact, I see color in line. Line begins to formulate in our minds uh, volumes, uh, literally volumes, dimensions, which have color. So um, uh, it gets a little complex and you'd have to kind of experience it, you have to see it. But this is what I'm working with right now, which makes my paintings uh, uh, very exciting for me because I've also realized this part of my work, the same way de Kooning began to be uh, uh, supercharged with this feeling of surface and line. And when you look at my work, when you see my paintings, uh, the first encounter will be surface. Uh, undoubtedly. Uh, I think my sense of line is uh, much more in the, um, the designation of the colors. Uh, I think my colors actually become lines and the way they're uh, appearing out of the surface they are designated by, you can perceive brush strokes but there are no brush strokes. My work does not contain brush strokes. In fact my work does not contain any traditional uh, form of um, the way we have conceived of making an artwork no longer exists uh, in the work that I do. It's completely different. The surface, the sensuality of the surface is completely different. So that was my note for the day. Um, uh, the relation, the, 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 the um, insight I had into my own work before I read de Kooning, but I realized what he was going through, and there are probably going to be more ideas and thoughts I have about this, this artist because he's been very important in my own development, especially when I went to art school when I was 18, 19, 20. Uh, de Kooning was uh, extraordinarily important uh, for me to release my energy, but I had no concept of what it is that he was dealing with, but I am now, uh, 35 years later, understanding the uh, uh, the uh, the explosion he faced when he was working on his uh, particularly his women paintings. Uh, uh, I think one of the the previous one was called Excavation, which was very Pollock-like in its overall feeling everywhere. Uh, but there you go, and you'll have to see my paintings in order to uh, understand this. Uh, two-folded aspect of the work, uh, the surface and the line as they appear in my work is very different from de Kooning but nonetheless also uh, have the same impact I believe. So uh, we'll leave it for that uh, for today.